Broncos, shady dealers, and finance profits. Oh my. Welcome to another automotive news update. Hello, it's Elizabeth from the Homework Guy team. If you missed the big guy, stay tuned to our community page for updates on Kevin's recovery. Your outpouring of prayers and support has been tremendous and appreciated. Today's menu includes a shady dealer's FTC settlement, increased finance profits, Subaru's first electric car, a microchip update, and Ford's bucking Broncos. Remember, you can use the cool new chapters feature below to fast forward to exactly what you're looking for. Let's roll. Have you seen our reaction videos to attorney Dan Whitney out of Maryland? We've discussed how the FTC protects consumers and investigates shady car deals. Well, here's a recent example. After three years, the Federal Trade Commission's case against Tate's Auto Group ended with a $450,000 settlement with former dealer principal Richard Berry. Tate's Auto Group has stores in Arizona and New Mexico. In 2018, they were accused of deceiving customers and falsifying information on the vehicle credit applications, namely the amount of income. Now, you may be wondering why only $450,000? Well, Tate's Auto denied all claims for three years, but after exhausting their own resources finding a $7 million settlement, they filed bankruptcy. Aww. Well, that's the end of that bird call. Did any of our viewers purchase from Tate's Auto Group? Comment below. Okay, one more disappointing discovery I made this week, but I promise it gets better. The handy thing about certain dealerships like being public corporations is they have to publish given financial information. Let me show you the average finance F&I profit per vehicle retailed comparing second quarter last year, 2020, to second quarter this year, 2021, and you'll see what I mean. AutoNation's profits rose from 21.75 to 23.42, a 7% increase. Lithium Motors from 15.99 to 18.18, a 14% increase. Penske Automotive Group went from 13.30 to 16.04, a 21% increase. And the list just goes on in the same matter. Now, you might be thinking that, well, car prices are higher, so now of course they'd make more money in the finance office. Perhaps, but these increases I'm talking about are specifically based on increased sales of service contracts, extended warranties, protection plans, and other junk products. AutoNation CEO Mike Jackson said, it's not that we're raising prices on F&I, it's that the adoption rate of our products is going up and up. He continues to say he sees no reason why this should slow down in the future. Okay, homework guy viewers, I know we're only talking about a few hundred dollars more per car sale, but that's not the point. The point is that more and more people are trusting and believing the line of BS being sold in the finance office. Seriously, in the age of YouTube, Google it, social media, car buyers are buying more of these bad products? I just find it so hard to believe. Please, someone comment below and explain to me how this could happen. I made a new playlist of our homework guy videos that specifically address the finance office and these junk products and problems that customers face in there. I hope as many of you can pay it forward and share this playlist in an effort to not let otherwise unsuspecting loved ones waste their money without knowing the full story about F&I products. Enough said. Subaru has been slow to enter the race to build electric cars, but not anymore. They're investing $272 million into a new research and development facility north of Tokyo. This facility would bring all the engineering, product planning, and design brains together in one place. Subaru does have their first electric car, the Solterra, coming to the U.S. market in mid-2022. So, how bad has the chip shortage gotten this year for the car industry? AutoSource has predicted a loss of 6 million new cars worldwide this year. Okay, so if you didn't know, the semiconductor microchips used in cars are also used in computers, smartphones, appliances, etc. They're made from the elemental metal silicon, which is a $500 billion industry and which supports a global tech industry of $3 trillion. Here's the kicker though, the raw material silicon comes from Japan and Mexico and the chips are manufactured in Taiwan, China, and some in the US. The world's largest foundry, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company supplies more chips than anyone else to the global auto industry, but automakers only make up 3% of its revenue. Apple makes up more than 20%. Since January 2021, GM has relied on the U.S. microchip company Qualcomm for its supply. Steve Carlisle, president of GM, reported that he wants to overhaul the company's part sourcing, including microchips and batteries and a few other things. He plans to do this by cutting out vehicle features, streamlining their production processes, and focusing on a 30 to 60 day inventory instead of 90 days. 
And this is actually good news for U.S. consumers. If GM can turn out vehicles more quickly and efficiently, prices should actually start to come down. True to its name, the 2021 Ford Bronco looks amazing, but like a bucking Bronco, it doesn't want to be ridden. This flashy Ford was designed to go over any terrain, but thousands of these beasts can't even make it out of the Detroit parking lot because of safety issues with the roof. As of mid-August, Ford announced it needed to replace all the hardtop roofs. By the end of July, Ford had built 13,380 Broncos and sold only 4,078. The few that have made it to dealer lots are seriously overpriced. Ford is trying to sweeten the delay for customers who ordered and paid for a Bronco but aren't getting it by giving out free stuff. I don't know about you, but this kind of feels like taking candy away from a baby and then giving him a toy he doesn't want instead. He might look at it for a minute, but he's still going to be mad. Anyway, the 2021 Ford Bronco was built with the outdoor enthusiast in mind, the kind of people who want to get out hit the desert sand, go to their remote mountaintop cabin on the weekends, or rip down the beach. Here's a peek at the trim levels that are available. The prices are shown with the two-door models, and the four-door models available in each trim are between two dollars and $4,000 more. Here's the base at $28,500, Big Bend at $33,385, Black Diamond at $36,050, Outer Banks $38,995, Badlands $42,095, and Wild Track. 49475 For comparison, here on the top trim level, the Bronco First Edition, the price for a two-door goes from 56915 to 61110 for the four-door. By the way, I've been following this story for a few weeks, and as of publishing this video, there have been no new stories on the Bronco in the last month. Hmm. Well, your best bet if you want a Ford Bronco, I would just wait until the 2022s before you let her book. It won't be a first edition, but maybe you can skip the headaches. And FYI, with any first edition, spare parts production takes a bit to be available. All right, if you appreciate our video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and please always remember to comment on our videos and share them with your family and friends. Comments really matter because they help boost our searchability and lead others to great homework guide content too, especially that financing part today. The entire homework guide team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's what we love to do. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. As Kevin always says, you guys rock. I'm the amazing Elizabeth. Gotta go.